Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed by the title of the video that you just clicked on, we are going over this optic right here. This is the Vortex 1-8 Strike Eagle Gen 2. And basically the differences between the Gen 2 and the Gen 1 are going to be that has this throw lever here, which you can remove if you want to. It's threaded in there. I see no reason to remove it. I think it's a big improvement. I think all low power variable map uh, scopes rather should come with them. They are very, very helpful. Uh, also, it has a new reticle, which is the BDC3 reticle. We're going to get into that here in just a second as well. But the actual body, the glass, the coatings, all of those sorts of things are the same as the original one, but they're not insignificant upgrades in my opinion. So this particular one was sent out by the good folks at Brownell, so I truly appreciate that. And they offer it with a combo uh, mount and optic package. Uh, the mount itself is just, in my opinion, my guess, a rebranded worn scope mount, uh, which is a really solid mount, 30 millimeter mount because it has a 30 millimeter tube. But let's get in close and see some of the details on the scope. And then we'll get into the reticle and then what I think of it overall. We'll start at the rear of the optic and then sort of work our way forward. So back here we have our uh, eye focus ring. Basically what this does is it allows you to set the scope to where the reticle is clear for your eyes. Everybody's eyes are different, vision's different, all those sorts of things. So you can back it out, move it in, so that way the reticle is nice and crisp as you look at it. Again, continuing forward, we do have that throw lever there, integral. And you guys can see the throw from 1x there all the way over to 8x is right about 180 degrees, um, which is pretty standard for a 1 to 8 scope. It's got nice narrowing on there, though, if you don't want to use the lever. Again, though, I don't know why you wouldn't want to use the lever. <laughs> so there's that. Um, here on the side, we do have our illumination. It goes all the way from 1 all the way up to 11. And what I like about the way the illumination on this one is set up is that basically only the horseshoe and dot are illuminated when you do that on the reticle. So the whole reticle doesn't get illuminated and it doesn't have any sort of like washout or anything like that, which is quite common on a lot of, you know, sub $1,000 scopes. Um, here we have our CR123A battery compartment. Uh, obviously it's already in there. And then over here on the right side, it's kind of a flashy logo on there. Definitely not quote unquote tactical, if you will. Um, but it is our windage cap and it does come with an extra CR123A battery in there. Um, each adjustment for windage is half MOA. Again, pretty standard on something like this. Um, and the same is true there on the uh, elevation. They are audible, crisp, all of those sorts of things, but don't expect like, you know, night force Christmas to them because it's just not there. It's not designed for that. And again, you're not going to be dialing in wind or elevation because this is designed for you to use the BDC at distance. Before I get into the reticle, one of the things I should have pointed out there with the uh, turrets is that they have 140 MOA of adjustment, which is huge. That's a ton for a low power variable scope. So that definitely is something that is going to be important, particularly if you're running it on like non AR-15. So on an AR-15, you're never going to need that. Um, but if you're running it like on an AK or an FAL or something with kind of like janky mounts, it can become important. So um, now we'll move on to the reticle. Like I said, it is very different than the original Strike Eagle reticle which I did not like at all um, but let's get into it so first right in the center it does have a one MOA dot um, so that we can get a nice precise zero speaking of the zero it is designed to be zeroed at 50 yards for the BDC to work um, going on down there you can see the first hash, ma hash mark there that is obviously going to be a 300 yard hold and then down to four five and six it has the sub hash mark in between for the 50 yard increments um, that's what that is and basically you can auto range with this like other reticles um, by putting uh, the person's shoulder that you're aiming at um, up top in the top portion of the reticle and if it is 
if it meets you know the edges there of those lines that is approximately how far away it is like i mentioned earlier as well uh, when it's illuminated the only portion that you actually see yeah, illuminated is going to be the ring that is a 16 moa ring uh, me personally i kind of wish that ring was a little bit bigger um, for close in but that's just a, a preference thing uh, the dots that you see on the way down those are going to be for wind holds so uh, the inner one is for five mile an hour full value wind the second one is going to be 10 mile an hour and then the third one is 15 um, mile an hour full value winds again that's a full value going directly left to right or right to left. Um, if the wind is going, you know, not full value, you can kind of half it and hold off in between there. Um, and then on the edges, you have those three spikes, which basically when it's on the one X mode, really does kind of let you get a quick, um, quick acquisition of the center of the reticle. With the reticle out of the way, there's only a few other things to kind of discuss. Number one, folks always ask in terms of illumination, is it daylight bright? I always say you got to decide that for yourself right now as the sun's going down it's definitely daylight bright um, but we're rolling photos here from earlier in the day when we had you know full sunlight and uh, you guys again can make that decision generally speaking though with low power variable optics again sub one thousand dollars you're not going to get daylight bright or what people consider to be daylight bright um, that said it does have an etched reticle so you can use it in any lighting you don't need the illumination to use it if you're going to use it say at night and you're using a weapon mounted light uh, you'd still have the ability to use the reticle because it's etched in there so you don't need the illumination but it's nice to have i suppose if you have it um, cost on this one is certainly not going to be inexpensive but for what it is i do think it's a good value um msrp on the one to eight comes in at uh at 4.99 they also make a one to six that is a little bit cheaper basically the difference between the two obviously is 2x magnification I think we all get that um, but the big difference is going to be the eye box and eye relief uh, this one's a little bit tighter however um, for a one to eight scope with a 30 millimeter tube it's plenty generous i did not have any issues in terms of eye box or eye relief at all using it so we fired from multiple different positions and again no issues with it in that regard so it's pretty forgiving on that front brown owls of course those offer the combo like we said and uh, we'll put a link down below in the video description or pinned in the comments where you can pick that up and if there's a code we'll put that in there as well for you guys so there is that now i'm sure folks are going to ask me which one should i get this guy right here which is the primary arms second focal plane i should have mentioned that i don't think i did this is a second focal plane um, scope meaning that the only time the actual bdc is going to be on uh, in terms of measuring things and holdovers and those sorts of things is when it's all the way up at the 8x magnification. Um, so Primary Arms obviously makes their Gen 3 uh, 1 to 8 as well. And so which one should you get? <laughs> My answer, honestly, if I could only have one, would be the Primary Arms. And the reason for it is I think it has a better reticle. Now, without question, uh, the Strike Eagle, some people on forums, I've read it, um, are saying that the Strike Eagle knocked off the PA reticle. I will tell you this, it definitely was inspired by it, without question, no doubt about it. Um, the auto ranging features, the wind holds, uh, all of those sorts of things are very, very similar, um, but not exactly the same. Um, I like the ring on the ACSS a little bit better. But in terms of glass clarity, quality, those sorts of things, they're identical. I see no difference looking through them, um, you know, in terms of quality, edge to edge clarity, those sorts of things. Again, it's pretty good um, for a scope of this price, but you are going to see some, you know, purplish stuff around the edges um, if, when you're looking through, if you're really looking for it, um, that you wouldn't see on like a $1,500 scope. Um, but Again, if you're actually engaging targets, you're never gonna see that in real life. It's just, if you're looking for it, you can see it. And again, I'm somebody who looks through different optics multiple times a day you know, for a living. So uh, most folks probably will not uh, notice that at all though. Um, but I'm not saying don't get the vortex. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I prefer the PA reticle a little bit more. And one reason I should get into that as well is that uh, Vortex says, uh, you know, that the reticle, the BDC is designed for common AR-15 rounds fired out of a 16 inch barrel. Uh, throughout this testing, we were using Federal M193 out of a 16 inch barrel, that BCM barrel. And uh, when you zero at 50, they say it's a 5,200 yard zero, right? So if 
you actually do the math behind a 50, 200 yard zero, you'll know that it's not actually a thing. Uh, you're actually high at 200 yards if you zero at 50. So we shot this one out um, to 450 yards. And one thing I noticed was that uh, basically as we got out beyond like 350-ish, between 350 and 400, I'm hitting high. And that's because, in my opinion, it, you're using a 50 yard zero when you should confirm at 200 in the manual it just says 50. Um, so that's my take on it anyway. So just kind of know that we're hitting about eight inches high at 450 of where we should have been. And that is just because of that 50 yard, 50, 200 yard zero not being an exact thing. Um, so just kind of know that if you can confirm at 200, I'd be willing to bet that goes away and you'll be right on as you should be. So just kind of know that going forward. That said, I also think the ability to have to zero your scope rather at 50 yards is a good thing versus 100 because there's a lot of people that don't have access to 100 yard range but if you do the 100 yard zero is just more precise it just is what it is right it's math um but yeah that is pretty much it with one exception uh if you actually look at those the spikes that come in from the side and the bottom I have no idea how this happened but on this particular one again sample size of one the spike at the bottom is canted off to the right a little bit. Now Vortex has fantastic customer service for folks that don't know that. It's lifetime, no questions asked. Um, they're famous for their great customer service. I'd be willing to bet if I called them and you know sent a picture in, which is really hard to tell in the pictures, but trust me in real life, it is off to the right of where it should be. Basically you go down the center stadia line and it should be right in line with it. It's not, it's off. Um, but Again, sample size of one, it's probably just, you know, a rare thing that didn't get picked up in QC, but it is what it is. I just shoot and report back to you guys and you guys can make your minds up on it. Um, but it's a quality scope. I, again, no issues with it at all. I just know everyone's going to ask me for the comparison. So that's why I wanted to touch on that. But I also want it to be a standalone review as well. Um, it's, it's recommended for the price point for sure if you want the capabilities of a low power variable optic. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the scope that I didn't cover, you can always post those down below in the comments section. However, the best place to reach me is over at my Facebook page as always. If you shoot me a message, I get back to everybody over there. Sometimes it takes me a little bit because there's literally hundreds of thousands of you and only one of me, but I do see them over there versus other places that I post content like YouTube, uh, Parler, Instagram, etc. So there is that. Um, if you haven't subscribed and you like this type of video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. According to my analytics, most of you are actually not subscribed. So if you think you are, just double check that as well. Hit the notification bell. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.